Welcome to our module on budgets. When I do budgets in my face-to-face -face classes, I ask the students, who in the class budgets? And almost nobody puts up their hand. There might be social pressure not to put up your hand. It might feel like nerdy or dorky if you do, but very few students raise their hand. And I've got to tell you, they are wrong not to raise their hands. Everybody budgets in one way or another. If you've ever gone to the grocery store and said, okay, I'd like to keep my grocery bill under $50 today, you have budgeted. You have budgeted. And when companies budget, it's really not that much more complicated or convoluted than that. They have a scarce resource that they want to plan for. If I go out to the nightclub and I have $100 to spend on drinks, funny, my grocery uh, budget there was cheaper than my nightclub budget. I never go to nightclubs. Uh, but, you know, if I have $100 to spend on drinks, I'm budgeting, I'm planning, okay, I'm going to spend this much and that much and I'm not going to run out of money, right? That is a budgeting process. And as we work through uh, several types of budgets, I, I find this topic is dreaded by students when it comes to exams. They sort of look at it and they go, my God, we've learned like eight different kinds of budgets. You know, we've learned a, a sales budget, a schedule of expected cash collections, a production budget, a uh, materials purchases budget, uh, operating, uh, sales, selling and admin expenses budget, an overhead budget. We've learned to budget income statements and balance sheets. We've learned all these different budgets. Oh, and they're jumbling in my mind. And I always want to uh, sort of hug the students that are feeling this stress and, and tell them that don't try to memorize budgets. What you need to do is, is understand the purpose of the budget and then try to figure out, okay, well, this is what I'm going to need to compute when I do my budget. But I find budgets are not a test of memory. And if you're treating your budgets when you're doing this in class as a test of memory, you are going to be a sad individual. Either you'll have a great memory and be able to do it, but you'll still be miserable memorizing, or you're going to try to memorize, you're going to blow it, and uh, you know it's going to come unglued on the uh, exam, which is, which is definitely more frequently the case. If you understand the purpose of the budget, so for example, a production budget, if you just hear the words production budget, production means make. So how much stuff is our company planning to make? That's what the budget is answering. How much stuff does our company need to make? Well, if you think about it in those terms, when you read a production budget problem, it's just a matter of like solving a puzzle, in my view. Budgeting is a fun topic. I think it's one of the easier topics of the semester because if you treat it as memory work, it's brutal. If you treat it as puzzle solving and just like parsing some difficult English, like just sort of following a word problem, uh, it becomes a very easy process. So my number one advice to you as students that are clearly the only reason you're watching this because you're doing an accounting class and because you have to learn budgets. Well, if you are in that scenario, try not to memorize. Try to think, what is the purpose of this budget? And then practice. Of course, you're going to practice a bunch of them. Uh, practice a bunch of them, but, but try to go at the purpose. I am not a stickler for format. When I write a budget, if a student does it in a slightly different order, they mix up a couple of lines, as long as they're getting the right place with their budget, I generally get, let them earn full marks unless they've really screwed something up. Uh, so... I would say be way less worried about form and be way more worried about function, right? Like, does your budget work? Does it get to the uh, uh, bottom line that it's supposed to get to? If, if I'm doing a materials purchases budget, what am I trying to figure out? Well, what materials do I need to purchase and when? That's the plan uh, that we're coming up with and probably how much am I spending on those materials. So the budgets we learn this module, there are many, many of them. And once again, don't memorize, I would say, I would say, try to learn what the budgets are looking for and then try to solve the puzzle of budgets. Um, okay, speaking of the puzzle of budgets, I just want to take one last moment here just to explain kind of how they work together. So the first budget we're going to learn is called a sales budget. 
Uh, and the sales budget just says how much stuff we're planning to sell. You know, I sell um, paper clips or pens. I sell these types of pens. And I'm planning to sell a thousand pens each quarter. So if I'm planning to sell a thousand pens each quarter, when do I get my money? Sales budget will drive cash collections. The sales budget will also drive production, right? And these are all budgets, schedule of expected cash collections, production budget. Um, you know, if I'm planning to sell a thousand pens, I've got to make a thousand pens. So, you know, I can plan on when I'm going to produce those pens. Production is going to drive materials purchase. You know, if I'm a, a manufacturer of pens, I've got to buy plastic or whatever the, the pen is made out of. I got to buy that stuff. So when am I going to buy the the plastic that goes in the pen to be ready to produce the pens. Uh, also, if I'm in charge of production, that's going to drive direct labor, right? When do I need to hire and fire employees? If, if I need to fire employees, when do I need to do that? When do I need to hire employees? These are all important things I need to consider if I'm running a company, right? If, if I know my production is going to be way down this year and I need to, you know, uh, cut my workforce, or if I'm, I know production is going to be up and I need the workforce to grow, I, I need to plan on that. Uh, direct labor often drives overhead. We've talked about labor being one of the, the main uh, drivers of overhead. Uh, and so all of these budgets kind of work together and they all drive off of each other. And so when we're preparing our budget, I'll try to point it out when we're preparing our budgets, but something I want you to keep your eyes peeled for is just the fact that all these budgets are kind of linking together. And I, I consider each individual budget a fun puzzle. I'm not lying and I'm not BSing you when I say that. I think they're interesting and fun in and of themselves. But what ends up happening, especially as we get into our income statement and balance sheet particularly, is these little puzzles, the sales budget's a puzzle, the cash collections budget's a puzzle, our cash disbursements for labor and materials purchases and overhead, these are all pieces of the puzzle. They all start to form a bigger puzzle and those pieces need to fit together too. And I I mean, I know it's a pain and you're first learning this, it can be a bit overwhelming, but I do want you to keep in mind how the pieces are put, fitting together. So you, you put together the sales budget puzzle, then that puzzle attaches to our production budget and our cash collections budget. And eventually you have what we call a master budget, a comprehensive master budget, and all the budgets work together to tell the same story. So that's the purpose of the budgeting chapter. I think it's a beautiful chapter. Students often feel overwhelmed by this chapter because they attempt to memorize my first best and most frequently given advice here is really try not to memorize, really try to practice and understand what the budget's looking for, and then see if you can put together the puzzle in your own terms and understand it in your own mind, how that puzzle comes together. Okay, that's it for this video. Stay tuned. We've got many, many budgets to prepare. Can't wait.